Red Death is going to play a big part in the first five episodes of the Flash in the Flash, in case it's nine. Or at least the f first four, as in 902 to 905. She might appear in 901, but she won't be really posing a big threat until 902. Now, we know this because the description that we got a few days ago saying for 902, which I'm not going to talk about the entire description. I can do a full video over that, frankly, and I probably will. But the part I want to look at, and I'm not going to show anything on screen, but this is official. Again, I'll probably do another whole video talking about it. You'll see it then. But it says, Red Death looms in Central City and commands that failure is not an option. And now we know from the trailer of The Flash is 9, that one minute one, not the 30 second one, that this new speedster that is Red Death is trying to build a time machine. Now, why she would need one, I don't know. But, that's two things that we know right now about Red Death. She's in Central City, for whatever reason. She's trying to build a time machine. The third thing that we know is that OG Rainbow Rider is working with her. We learned that in Steph Photos, so we've known that for months. Which means, she is either working with, or they are working for... Right, Death, as in the Rose Gallery, aka Captain Boomerang, Murmur, The Fiddler, and OG Rainbow Raider, possibly a few others. I'd be a little bit surprised if that was the case, but those four are either A, working for Right Death, or working with Right Death. Now, the four option could be Right Death threatening all of them, because let's be real. Red Death not killing anyone when she's there wouldn't really be realistic. <laughs> so, I, I don't see her not threatening anyone because this is supposed to be the Air vs. Batman, but gone rogue with his own Flash combining the Batman. That's what Red Death is. Bruce Wayne and Barry Allen combining the one. Bruce Wayne takes over and, and is a speedster, but is an evil Batman. That's more powerful than any version of Batman we've ever had to face. In the Arrowverse, it's Batwoman. Now, whatever you think about the show, Jameson Leslie does kill it as Batwoman. I, I have massive respect for Jameson Leslie. Her show is not great, but she does kill, it, knock it out of the park as Batwoman and Ryan Wilder, proving an arm again in The Flash, which is my next point. In Armageddon, and specifically 804, it was specifically set up for Red Death to be in this season. I was expecting it to be in season 8, but knowing Eric Wallace, he planned ahead, and assuming we got season 9, Red Death would be the first graphic novel. And I was pretty much right. <laughs> in 804 of Armageddon, or the Flash Season 8, Episode 4, we learned that Ryan Wilder gave Iris a device that was used to take down a, quote, certain lady in red. That lady in red, like I predicted it would be, I'm sure like all of you did, was Red Death. Now, they said lady in red. At the time, you could have taken it as Red Death or a villain directly out of the comics. That was a villain in The Flash, but they're not going down that route. Now, the device that was given to Iris from Ryan that was used to take down Red Death in your Armageddon timeline was the gun that temporarily negated a speedster's powers. Could that gun be used in this graphic novel? Yes and no. The thing is, for Red Death and speedsters now in Season 8, after Season 8, and ever since, like, you know, the beginning of the show, <laughs> not really the beginning of the show, but Season 4 and onward... There's been a constant thing here of at least Barry not being able to be affected by a metahuman dampener thing. He's outrun the metahuman cell, literally. He broke out of it twice. He managed to use his own powers in the cell. I, it, it doesn't, you know, and so Barry can do that <laughs> if he chooses to. Right? Although they kind of did get away from that season 5 because Barry didn't up in a cell and he couldn't use his powers. So, it depends what plot we're looking at here. But, Red Death, we don't know if she's part of the next B-Force or the positive. You, I would assume 
that she is part of the positive. If they're going down the route of Ryan Wallace from another Earth, specifically in the Dark Multiverse, kills Zed Flash, whether that's Jesse Quick, Barry Allen, Iris West, or Caitlin Snow, I don't know. I would assume it'd be a female because it'd be a little bit weird if it was actually Barry and Ryan merging. This is a little bit weird. <laughs> Um, but it would make sense because Barry Allen is the Flash of the Arrowverse and Ryan Wilder is the Batman of the Arrowverse, so it, it would make sense. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I who knows? <laughs> but if they're going down that route of Red Death being a, like Ryan Wilder that's merged with some speedster, then what's going to happen is... Just, it's going to be a controlled mess. <laughs> and I'm here for it. If it's a Ryan Wilder that's from the future, that went rogue, became a speedster, and is in our time trying to get back 2049, or 2030, or the 31st century, I don't know. Any time, then a time machine is in place. The thing is, is that that gun... Might not even work on Ride Death. Because she could be connected to the Pilot Speed Force. It might not work for her. It might she might be connected to the next Speed Force. It might not work for her. It could be in a whole case of they have a few minutes and it won't be enough time to get her locked up. So those are three possibilities why that gun won't work. It didn't work on Fawn and Armageddon temp it only worked temporarily. Barry couldn't run Thawne anywhere. He was too slow. He was going faster than Mach 20. And it... I mean, it made sense. <laughs> I'm not hating on it. But... My point is, is that the gun that they introduced in Armageddon, that was a whole nother timeline where Thawne was a flash. He knew everything that was going to happen in our timeline that we're in right now for the flash. Besides, you know, Barry... Everything past Armageddon, he didn't really know. And really pre Armageddon. Post season seven finale, he didn't know anything about. Pre season seven finale, he knew everything lining up. So it wouldn't be really full fledged force to say that Thawne, aka the Flash and Armageddon, told Ryan Wilder to make that gun. Barry didn't know about that. The only way he knew about that gun was when Iris shot Thawne. That was it. Barry has no idea what that gun is even called, what it does besides it might take away Speedster's speed for a few minutes, and then that's it. And Barry's never been the kind of guy to use a gun unless absolutely necessary. At least from what we know about him. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, I mean, this would be a case where that's required. But... To the point where I'm, where I'm actually making the video here. <laughs> How can Red Death be a good villain on The Flash? With four or five episodes of her character. They made it work for Despero. You know, he wasn't really like a villain villain. He was just misled. Perfectly, I may add. <laughs> but I think Red Death, if they do it right, can be better than Savitar, DeVoe, Cicada... Godspeed, Ava, Bloodwork, and uh, Despero. Thawn and Zoom, especially Thawne Season 8, which is my favorite version of Thawne in the entire show history, I don't know if Thawne and Zoom can be topped, but Red Death can certainly top all the villains in Season 3 of the Snake, excluding Thawne. Red Death can top all of them. If they do her right. If they do the character justice. Now. A few ways it can do that. Like I alluded to earlier. It would not be realistic. If we didn't hear that right death. Is killing just random people that get in her way. Civilians or metas. Or species that are trying to come after her. Like new species that we never met before. To just kill her. And you know. Or they she kills them sorry. And it, I don't know. But somehow some way. You can't tell me right death is not going to kill anyone the, sh the five episodes she's in. It makes no sense for me to watch this kind of novel and not see anyone die to right death. Even if it's off screen, 
I don't care. Just say it. Red Death, her name is literally Red Death. There's death in the freaking name. She's undoubtedly going to kill someone. Now, I'm not saying on Team Flash. I'd be a little bit surprised. Um, the only person I can think of would be Joe. But I, even then, it's like 50-50, right? We don't know. Maybe Goldface or Hartley or H Hotness would die to Red Death. I mean, she gets away from Barry for a quick few little seconds and kills them. I can't imagine her killing her doppelganger, Ryan Wilder. I can't imagine that. What I can't imagine is Red Death enter the city or maybe Gotham, but mainly Central City, and just killing random people. Because in 515 or whatever episode it was, we learned that Red Death... Killed a lot of people to the point where I guess she was compared to Zoom and the amount of people she's killed. Now, in that same scene, it was that the cicada killed more people than Zoom and Red Death by Sing. But here's something to point out Cicada that we got in season five didn't really kill that much. I mean, yeah, sh he killed. <laughs> Both of them did. The two stupid cicadas. <laughs> but. It wasn't as much as it was meant to be. Because they actually stopped them this time. It wasn't a, years and years and years and years and years and years. A cicada coming back and killing. It was a one and done deal. One story arc. One giant season. And nothing else. Cicada will never be continued in this show's history. Even after the show's done, Cicada will never be brought back. So, in this timeline post-crisis, Cicada, to be honest, probably never killed more than Zoom did. So, Zoom and Thawne are the two top murderers in this show. Thawne most likely leading that with Zoom. As in who's killed how many people? Thawne's probably beating Zoom for season 8. All the civilians he murdered in 820. All the, you know, setups he did in Armageddon. With Cisco and Dying and Nate and Sarah. I mean, yeah, Thawne's, or Reverse Flash Barry caused that. But that all happened because Thawne created that Reverse Flash point. Another thing to point out is that... <laughs> not to point out... We know very little. And we're not going to know more until the episode premieres. Or the season premieres, sorry. But 902, I do believe, will be the first episode where we see Right Death. 901 could have a cliffhanger of Right Death. But we know 901 will be heavily West Allen centric. So, I can't imagine them putting in time for Right Death. Because no one's going to give a crap. Unless you're a hardcore Flash fan. You're not going to care. All that's going to be talked about when the pre season premiere airs. Is West Allen, West Allen, West Allen, West Allen. That's it. No one's going to talk about Captain Boomerang. Or not very many. I don't want to be talking about them. <laughs> and, you know. When we go to 902. I just won't be an episode that much. will be most likely Barry centric from what it looks like. And, you know, everyone's going to complain about it. Because <laughs> heaven forbid we get one episode out of the final season where it's Barry centric, right? <laughs> but, look, I, I made publicly clear I am skeptical of this season. I am worried about it. But if they do it right, it can be a good season. It won't top seasons one, two, and eight. For me, it won't. But it can top seasons 3 through 7 if they continue with Sinead's setup, up where Barry is confident, powerful, using his full power and not relying on Iris or the Team Flash 24-7 to tell him how to use his powers correctly. That's not needed. At all. And it's a whole thing of... Just, where's it going to go? Because it can go in 20 different directions. They could bring in Red Death, and she could not kill a single soul. <laughs> Would I like that? No. But the thing is, is that... 
it's a whole thing. But to make this story arc even better, we need to get OG Speaster fights back in the show. What they did in 820 for Barry first Stawn, that massive fight with when they're all forced up and the forces powers going through them. I really loved that fight. I know a lot of people didn't. I know a lot of people did. It was really short. I get it. But the idea that we had two very powerful speedsters finding each other, I mean, that's never been done in the show's history. So the fact that we got that, I, I was blown away that we got that, to be honest. Right Death is arguably more powerful than Thawne if they do her right. Which means she can be more powerful than Barry. I would expect a full-on speedster fight between Barry and Red Death. I'm not saying Barry will end up having a few bones broken or his back snapped or his arm dislocated. I am saying that he will fight and he will lose to Red Death. And that's where Ryan Wilder comes in. That's where uh, all these are people come in. That is my number one assumption. I can't imagine them bringing in Red Death and bearing Red Death not finding each other one on one. I can't imagine that. Just the two of them running throughout the city, finding each other. If they do that one thing, Red Death story arc might be the best story arc since season two. Topping Armageddon. Topping the last of, the last of an hour season eight, if they pull that one thing off, that might alone just put it above Armageddon and ever so in season three through season seven. If they keep Barry leveled up, they keep him powered up, confident, and actually the Flash for once, that alone might push that over Armageddon. But if they add in that speedster fight, if they add in good writing, if they make it work as a white bear and it's come from four criminals, or two former criminals, and Batwoman, then yeah, it'll work. But for Barry needing help from five people to take down one speedster, I don't know. <laughs> it, it just depends where it goes. Because in the comics, Red Death's trail is bats, and it does kill people. When she interacts with someone, or like someone's in the lightning trail, it kills them. I've said that in some of the past videos. In the comics, that trail kills people. It ages them, and they die. Species, it takes longer. Barry's speed in the comics when he was fighting Red Death with his Bruce Wayne and Barry Unwell in the one, he started to lose his speed slower and slower and slower and slower because he was his speed was being used to prevent him from dying so fast. Now, it's his Nate Barry that we got. He's so fast, he probably wouldn't even be affected by it, at least, you know, right away. He shouldn't be. <laughs> but after eight years, he finally got a powerful Barry Allen. The Flash said, I've always wanted from this show, and I, I can't imagine them getting rid of that in season nine. I can't. I know Eric Wallace is going to make this a nostalgic season, with all these guest stars. Um, and I know that he's trying to listen to fans. Specifically West Allen fans. So they shut up. <laughs> but. Not a one. If you're a fan of actually The Flash. And not you know The Flash and Iris. Or Team Flash. Not a one probably will not be a good premiere. I, I'm all for West Allen. I am. It may not seem like it, but I really, truly am all for West Allen scenes. But the matter of the fact is, is that the show is called The Flash. It needs to be heavily focused on that in the final season. That's the only way it can work. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.